everyone, welcome to my channel and today I have a special video. It's Christmas Eve and that's actually the same day. It's like my one year anniversary with having Sora. Hi Sora. Ah, he doesn't want to look at the camera. He's camera shy. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience as a cat mommy. So, or meowy if you want to say it that way. And it's actually going to be something that it's like reflecting for a year or so. I had my first cat, which was Dawn basically in July of 2019 so that's like about one year and a half and I thought that for Christmas Eve because I doubt anyone wants to hear anything about money or professional or tech consulting and I let's just do a little fun video for cats so it also was very fitting that it happens to be on the anniversary day that I got sore so oh my god And actually, I just want to also show that this is not completed. It's I'm actually in the condo right now. We moved in already. If you guys haven't seen the moving vlog, make sure to check it over here. And this is actually just like a part of the backdrop I'll be doing. I'll be adding more. And each of these photos are actually of like little putikuda, if you guys know what that is, like little Japanese photos that you go to little photo booths or some Polaroids are here and there. It's like of my friends and of my boyfriend. Um, I don't think I have any of my cats, but that'll be a whole separate area. So in today's video, I wanna go over why cats, why I went to a breeder, how to prepare if you are thinking about getting a cat or maybe things that I personally learned. Oh my God, the cats are playing right now. Uh, how to prepare, what to do on the first month or what to expect on the first month and things I didn't know that I ended up learning. So a lot of this are based off, Jesse to chill. Oh my God. So a lot of these I learned from my two cats and also I've been fostering cats too. So at the time of this filming, I've only fostered two cats. So the first one was Life Fury. And then the other one was Charlotte, who I still currently have at the time of this filming. So I had about like, let's say four, cats in my apartment slash house at one point. So I had a lot of experience with first time, first months, first weeks or whatever. Uh, so if you guys are interested in getting a kitten or a cat, this is the video for you. Or if you're just curious and you wanna see how I do things then keep watching, you know? <laughs> so the first thing is why cats? And I'm always a cat person, but the irony is that I actually never really saw or pet or touched a cat before like maybe two years ago so that's kind of funny because if you think about it it's just like then why did you want a cat if you never touched a cat before so it was really mostly that i liked their kind of personality and what they come with so in this case dogs were too loud i've been with a lot of family and friends that have dogs they're too loud they bark and if they don't bark they're just like, you still need to deal with the lifestyle with it. And when you come from consulting, you don't want to constantly be worrying about walking your dog or um, they're also a lot more clingy too. Hey, I got this, this, I'm gonna talk about it, but this is what you're gonna be expecting, meowing, which honestly is not as bad as barking, but at least it's cute, you know? I mean, sometimes people think barking is cute, but when you're on calls all the time, and especially if you have a very vocal dog or cat, that's where it gets weird, but at least when dogs bark, it does, it travels the walls, but when it's meowing, it doesn't travel the wall that much sometimes. It depends on the kind of cat you have, but luckily I've only had like one cat that is very vocal, uh, the which is basically the foster cat since I've had her, like it's been meowing everywhere. I like that they're very independent too, so if I were to leave them alone for a day, I would be okay with that. Uh, there were even times I would leave them alone for like three days, which is not that hot. It's like probably only happened once and one time even doing it five days, but you have to prepare properly. So you really need to make sure that you have everything in place. It's they're still, even though they're independent, I hate that everyone says that they're cold or that they can't, they're not capable of loving you. Like that's completely false. It's really just more of like, they're just different. And I like that different. So especially with my lifestyle and also I like cats too for their personalities and for, 
you know, like even they're so fluffy and everything. So I've always been gravitated towards cats more, even though I've had more dogs in my life than ever. Like things like, oh, the cats could bite, cats can scratch, cats can do everything like that. That seems vicious, but then if you think about dogs, they do that too. You just need to really socialize them from the very beginning and also train them. So I want to go into that a little bit more about how to prepare for that and what you, what you should be doing your first month because I'll go into more how to socialize. So why did I go to a breeder? I actually wanted to adopt for a very long time. I knew I was going to adopt. And what changed my mind was that when I spoke to my career counselor at Accenture, which is basically like your mentor at Accenture or in most consulting firms, you get someone like that. He actually told me that he went to a breeder for his two cats. So he was actually my go-to for a lot of cat advice when I first started because he was the one that told me about this. So I went to a Taika breeder and these breeders are actually, they're more ethical. They kind of like have to do it for the sake of the breed, not for the sake of profit or they're not backyard breeders. That's like something I was worried about. So it's either you go to a really good breeder that actually cares about the health and the genetics and everything like that, or you go to a shelter. And the reason why I went for a breeder is because in my family and friends, I have a lot of people that are actually allergic to cats. And it's like, there's some people that are even deathly allergic to cats too. So I was like, there's no such thing as a hypoallergenic cat, but I did go for those that have like less of the protein in their saliva or that they shed less. And Dawn was the first one on the list. And I mean, there's like a few breeds out there, but Dawn was the one that really stood out to me because I didn't want a hairless cat, I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> um, so I got Dawn and Dawn is actually a Russian blue. So I got her from a breeder in Louisiana. Like she was actually the closest breeder from me in New York. So I had to actually place a deposit, then I had to place a full payment, and then they would actually ship her to me through a United's Pet Safe program. So that way they were actually able to basically ship her to me through an airplane as a carrier, but for a specific pet carrier. So that way it's safe and all healthy and everything like that. So that's one reason why I got a breed. I went for went to a breeder because I just want to make sure that like allergies wise, it's everything is good. But also the one thing that I want to think about is that if we have that many allergic people in our family, most likely our kids will be too. And you know, cats are gonna be here for like more than 15 to 20 years. So I have to also keep in mind about our kids. So if at one point that our kids end up developing allergies, I don't wanna make a baby try to take like an allergy pill or like separate them for a very long time. I want our kids to be able to roam around and be comfortable with cats and vice versa, that the cats will actually be able to roam around as if it's their own kingdom. So that's something that I keep in mind too, that if the odd chance that they do end up getting like an allergy, I don't know if it's a recessive trait or anything, but what if it does get carried on, we just don't get affected, but our kids do, then that's something we need to keep in mind for future proofing because I don't want to rehome a cat just because they have allergies so in this case like allergies were the main reason why I went to a breeder otherwise it was pretty hard to find a pure Russian blue or pure Siberian because of how it is so um, otherwise I would have gone to the shelter and I have seen some that are mixes but that's too risky because of the fact that like well what if they have allergies and everything and I did actually have a lot of friends and family come over. I love having guests over at my place. So that's one of the main reasons why I also want to get a hypoallergenic cat. So there's no excuse for them to come, um, except for one person, but that's just my brother. Shh. So for that, it's really just mostly, I want to make sure that they feel comfortable and they didn't have to get runny noses or anything like that. And um, there's like probably only one person that really reacted to my cat and that's like my dad's cousin or something like that. And they don't really come over to my place ever. It was just like for one time that I brought them over there. So that's like the only time I actually had a cat, um, had a reaction from a family or friend, even though they may be deathly allergic. So that's something to keep in mind. So how to prepare, actually, I like I mentioned before, I only really saw a cat for the first time two years ago, and only then I was like still a little bit scared. It's also because I was also misinformed. If you train and you socialize your cats properly from the very beginning when you get them, then you can properly train them to not bite, not scratch and everything like that. So things like you need to cat proof the place. So 
like all those kind of crazy videos and photos and everything you see of like cats like biting wires or knocking things down it could be trained it could also be something that you can watch out from the very beginning so that was something that i made sure to do cat proof could be like wires so you just have to make sure you hide all the wires which in general you won't want to because then eventually kids will either try to like bite and i don't know why kids would bite them but um at least kids could trip on them too and not to mention it doesn't look that pretty then you also got holes which at one point there was like at my apartment there was like a kitchen area where it's like a little it's like an l-shaped counter thing with one part being the stove and the other part being counter in between that little joint area there's a hole in the freaking floor that goes into that empty area so i had to seal that up with tape but at one point dawn actually got in there i didn't even know there was a hole because who, who would be looking at the floor up and then seeing that there's a hole so I had to seal that up and any of the unders we call it, which is basically any areas under like a shelf or a bed, you should seal it off. And unfortunately, because I was in, you know, in a small apartment in New York City, I couldn't do that really for the bed. So I had to actually like stuff a lot of stuff in there that I had normally for storage under the bed. But I just... <laughs> this is so bad but whenever like maybe for example a fire alarm goes on for maybe like accidentally being triggered from when we were cooking then they just run straight to the farthest corner in the bed and that was really worrisome and that's why i actually changed the bed frame when we moved to this apartment so that way there's no app there's absolutely no place that they can hide and that way like when we were in the old apartment we actually had a lot of clothes like a lot of clothes we didn't care about and stuffed it in that very corner so that way it's not so hard to get them because in the case of an emergency then like how am i going to do with this because if i do with this i have to go under and have to get them and then i have to try to you know put them in a carrier or something and then run away but really it should be e as easy as like grab them and go because if i have to grab and if i have to go under a bed just to go get them that's that's ridiculous so you always have to make sure to cat proof and we made sure when we moved to this apartment that every furniture we were getting was basically going to have no unders and we also made sure that anything that had like let's say for example a cabinet or sink or anything like that to seal it and luckily they had toe kicks already here so that was something that we were that we were really happy for so that way because in that old apartment cats love to go under our sinks in the bathroom and i was just like oh it's so hard to get them out there especially if you have a foster cat because my cats i can just pull them out and they're fine and they don't actually hiss or scratch me or anything but foster cats you know that some of them are feral so they just scratch you and they don't care about so that leads into all the other stuff that comes into furniture, toys, litter box, litter, and water fountains. Um, when it comes to being in an apartment, I also need to think in mind, take in consideration that I'm in a small apartment, so they need more vertical space. Because of that, I would actually get a cat condo. So you know the cat tree that is constantly in my Instagram stories. I got that cat tree, so that way they can climb up and have their personal space. If you get more than one cat, you need to worry about territory. So that way cats can actually have places to hide and you know, hide in a way that you can get them, not talking about under the bed. So that's something that you can do. And that was something that was really important because otherwise they would just be hiding everywhere else, like under a, under a sofa, under a bed, but you want them to have vertical space so it's easy to see and also that they actually want to go because it's actually going along with the cat behavior. Sora, why are you crying? My God. Of course, whenever I want to film that they start crying a lot. <laughs> So another thing is that toys, which is easy to do, and then litter box. I at first got the original like normal litter pan and then put litter in there, which is what actually what I got from the breeder, uh, which is actually what I asked the breeder for Dawn. I'm like, what should I get? Because like, I want to get something that Dawn was familiar with. So in this case, it was like Fresh Step, Multi-Cat, something like that. And then I got the same food as well. So I ended up changing the litter box and litter later on. And I'll talk to you about later on about what I learned and what I wish I knew and then i also got water fountains because apparently if you had like water of motion it seems more fresh than if you had just like still water so what i also like about the water fountain is that it's kind of constant so you don't have to constantly fill up a water bowl and if you want to kind of future proof for like long periods of time so i would get a water fountain because it actually encourages them to drink more and a lot of male cats they're more prone to having utis too because of the way that their anatomy is like so getting a water fountain also helps try to basically encourage them to drink more water so another thing is also 
they'll get the closest vet and then set appointments up for them. So usually the first week we recommend you to actually go, even the first two days actually, that's like the main recommendation. But for a lot of times in New York City, it's hard to find an appointment. So for me, it was actually just book it within the first week and then make sure that they're healthy and don't let your cats see each other the entire time. This only applies if you have multiple cats, but if you have just one cat, that's fine. But you should quarantine them in a very small area. In this case, usually a bathroom or a bedroom. And this is where they want to get comfortable with like the smells and the sounds and everything like that. And I'm going to go into a little bit more about socializing. With that, you want them to be quarantined if you have multiple cats so you don't actually spread viral cat diseases or illnesses or anything like that. So you shouldn't do that until you get like you go you get the go ahead from the vet or just be safe, just do 14 days. And that's really good to be because you want to prepare your cat, but also you want to make sure that they're feel comfortable because you want to have them like have a home base. And then after that, once they're comfortable, they could start going to other rooms. And of course, there's like a lot of site swapping and you should definitely watch Jackson Galaxy and all of his videos and cat, my cat from hell. He does a lot of this cat behavior videos. That's one thing I'm going to go into it, which is basically learn cat behavior. And this is where when I thought about cats to scratch and like bite and everything, if you learn cat behavior, you can actually swerve away from that, from just like trying to socialize and train them the proper way. So things like having a scratching post can help them not, can prevent them from actually scratching your furniture or maybe things like chew toys or maybe things like um, using toys instead of your hands to play with them when it comes to biting that would actually prevent them from biting you in the future and also your future guests because a lot of people end up rehoming when they have like kids like little kids just being like oh here's a little here my hands and then the cats just bite but that's because you didn't train them in the beginning very beginning to not bite hands that if you want to bite at least like use a toy to bite or at least play with your other cats you know so that was something I had to learn and then um, luckily my, none of my cats had that issue right away I had to actually just I mean some of them they like to play bite but then I train them away not to do that to bite a toy instead and I also get them to play a lot of like you know those like chasing around toys like a fishing pole kind of thing and that also helps out with their hunter instincts so they don't go too crazy and biting your feet or anything like that so a lot I learned a lot about this from uh, Jackson Galaxy, My Cat From Hell, and any, everything like that. So make sure to check out his channel if you are really interested in getting a cat because there's a lot of things that he covers in terms of behavior. Like if you have multiple cats, if you have cats that have like a little territorial issue or maybe even some litter problems or anything like that, all these kind of things, he covers it. And if not, go to your vet and not anything else because a lot of cats, they like to hide their health problems. So if you hide their health problems, the best way to tell is like their behavior. Like how often are they going to the litter? Do they eat or do they drink or anything like that? That's something you need to track so that way you get to know what to do. So the other thing is that you have to talk to other members of your household, even if you may like cats, like the others may not or may not know what to do. So you need to make sure that everyone knows like what routine. So I've been having like 8 a.m., 8 p.m., 2 a.m., 2 p.m. That's like feeding time and then there's water and then there's like wet food and all this kind of stuff. So I made sure that everyone in my household, in this case it's Addison, knew exactly what to expect. So even if I'm away on site for work, he can actually still do it because cats crave routine. So you want to make sure that there is still routine because the moment you change something, they're just like, what's going on? And they feel stressed. Like cats get really stressful when it comes to like a change of environment or change in like a schedule. So that's one of the main reasons why you, to, you should really stick to a routine. So in terms of like what to expect for the first month, that's where I learned a lot, especially with Dawn, but thankfully Dawn made it so easy for me, is that there's an acclimation period too, especially if you get them as a kitten, they're still learning who you are, like what, blah, blah, blah. So I've had a lot of, this was back before, you know, like before quarantine and everything. I had a lot of guests over. I made sure that she was out and about. I made sure that she knew like what everything was, sounds like I kept the windows open, like so there's cars and everything like that. And then I would have some calls and loudspeaker and I would also just be doing my own thing too. So that way she's aware that what I do and like what things are. But the first thing we needed to do was really to actually separate her and isolate her in the bedroom. We had no other cat at the time, but we should still do that because that way they can get into a small territory, feel comfortable and then want to explore. So that was like something that we had to do to really make her feel more comfortable because if you try to push a cat and you try to take the cat out, that's, that's an issue. You want to make sure the cat does it on her own or his own. So that way they feel more comfortable and then they get, they kind of own their territory a little bit more. 
you want to also socialize as much as possible. So schedule guests. So if you think that you have people coming over, try to do that with people that you know for sure and then have them be very patient too. So if you want them to approach, maybe get a toy, get a treat. And then a lot of what like Jackson Galaxy says is jackpot treat. So give a treat specifically whenever we have guests over. In this case, we have like a little slurpy treat. So that helps a lot when it comes to actually trying to get something to associate you as like positive. So with that case, Dawn has been exceptionally good with guests. For Sora, on the other hand, it was a little bit difficult because I got him on Christmas Eve last year. So January, there was not a lot of times where we would have a lot of people over, probably for my birthday one time, but that was it. And while back then when I got Dawn, it was summertime. So a lot of people were like either off from school or that they were just more free because they had time. So that's like what I would recommend is, and again, like definitely look into all the books and resources say, I'm just talking about from my personal experience. So if you don't, please don't use my information to diagnose whatever you think your cats can do or are doing or what will be doing. Doing. but this is just from my personal experience and I think my cats are pretty healthy and happy so we should be good and I've had a lot of experience from the foster cats too now which is two and so each time they do this I have to do the same thing however it's a little bit harder because you want to do this as early as possible because if you do it later on for example like our foster cat is now like five years old she so like for example the foster cat Charlotte she's five years old and she has so many bad habits already of like scratching and and everything like that but she kind of she's learning she's learning by watching my other cats so we just really need to be patient with her to make sure she feels comfortable with humans so those kind of cats are the ones you need to be worried about a little bit more and be more patient because like they may scratch like this is from her this is also from her like go everywhere <laughs> so you need to be a little bit more patient with them and that's one thing to expect if you end up going for a shelter so now i'm going to go into the section of things i didn't know so the first thing was pretty obvious when you think about it but cats are not all the same and for me it was just like okay well i'm just gonna get all the same toys and i'm gonna get all the same things it's gonna be fine but and even the food preferences were different they're so picky oh my god when it came to things like what they like to eat i need to make sure i actually know what they like um so it looks like dawn likes dry food i feed dawn blue wilderness adults and sora likes wet food the most in which i have like wellness chicken pate for adults so i kind of give both and then i already know that dawn ditches it after like a few seconds or so so, so sora actually walks over to hers and eats it all up so that's what I do for their food and it's like their preferences are always going to be different You just need to make sure that if like dry food is the only thing that they like Then they get enough water in which Dawn does But if they get a lot of wet food then that's perfect because a lot of like I said before male cats are more prone to UTIs So you want to make sure they get the moisture that they can get The other thing could be like let's say for example like where they are in terms of guests and other cats So like for example Dawn is not that good with other cats but she's pretty good with people and then Sora is actually pretty good with other cats, but not so well about other people. So whenever I have people over, Sora actually hides and dogs the ones like greeting with them and like, hi, hi, hi. You know, being the social cat that she is, but she's also an introvert too, so. And Sora is also so vocal, so playful. Oh my God, he's so desperate for food. I think Dawn is actually more of like a play motivated and then Sora is more food motivated. So knowing your cat is really important to know what drives them and how to actually help train them. So things like, for example, if I want to teach them how to sit or play or anything like that, that has to be something with whatever they're driven for. And for example, whenever I give a treat to Dawn to do something, she may not want it, and but she'll just do it. So she'll still do it. She's like, she's good like that. Um, so that's something to keep in mind because like, for example, Sora, um, is pretty good with cats. So I've had other cats come over and he's just so rambunctious He likes to play with them. He likes to chill with them But Don will, will take like a very far stance go far up into the cat tree and just stare Or she may just be hissing the entire time Which I've had a few cats come over here and there and they just like for like little play dates But you're not really supposed to do a play date the way it's like hmm. But Don just hisses and I'm like ooh. but Sora doesn't really hiss Sora sometimes but it's really just knowing what your cat really feels like because I know when I had foster cats, Dawn was really good with them, but I think she's probably good with female cats. But also I did a, a really good acclimation with them. But if I have like a random like friend that has a cat, then that's not gonna be acclimated. Like we're not gonna 
keep them in a room the entire day. The cats are not always the same, so you need to make sure you actually do your research and know exactly what to do whenever things are. So some cats could be tree dwellers, some cats could be bush dwellers, so the furniture may actually be different based off of how they want to do it. And you also need to make sure like how territorial they are. So also, one thing that has been a game changer is use top entry litter box. So a lot of my litter tracks and what that means is that whenever they use a litter box, they kind of kick it out or they when they jump out, they like kick it out somewhere outside the litter box. And when you use a top entry, they're kicking up and then it goes down. So you, you won't get that much litter on the floor. I would recommend top entry litter boxes. I did, however, my first foster cat, Life Fury, did not know how to use a top entry litter box. So I still had to use a low rising for her in the bathroom wherever she was usually stationed at. And that was where like she would just do it normally. But oh my God, the way she used top entry litter boxes is like how a human would use a toilet actually. It was just like she sat on the top part and then just pooped into the hole. Which is like, it's kind of funny, but sometimes because of that, it's like just there. The poop is just there, uncovered. So when I, one of my cats come in, it just like their feet land into the poop and then it gets all over the place. So that's something to keep in mind. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have that issue, but they, you definitely do need to do some training with the top entry litter boxes and teach them like, oh, you need to go into poop, not sit there. But because she was a foster cat and I wanted to be a little bit more cautious with her, that's what happened. So when it came to grooming, I would 100% recommend you to start ASAP. Don't wait because that's where I'm seeing a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's so hard to brush her teeth or it's so hard to trim his nails. It's because you didn't start early. You just, you were just probably scared about being scratched or bitten. But if you start early, they're just gonna take it. Like Dawn and Sora have been really bad with it. But then right now I just like, they're just sitting on my lap and I just do it. Everything's done when in terms of trimming and then in terms of like brushing their teeth and then actually like brushing their fur. It's so hard to get the actual foster cats to do it because they, they're not used to it, but um, they, 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 they are now a little bit more, a little bit. Uh, so, but it's a lot easier to do it the moment you get them. Go very early so that way they feel it's comfortable and you wanna make sure they're positive associated. So get a treat, maybe like pet them a little bit. So that way they know whenever they see the clippers, whenever they hear the clippers or anything like that, they're positively associating with it or they're okay with it. Otherwise they're gonna be like, ooh, it's like, oh, scary. So that's all I really had in terms of like what I wish I knew or things that I didn't know. Um, I mean, for the grooming one, that one seemed obvious, but just so many people, so many friends and family I know that have cats, they just, they just don't know this. I'm like, when I literally trim their nails in front of them, they're like, how do you do that? I'm like, well, I, <laughs> so my gripe with a lot of cat owners is that they just think like, oh, you know, cats are like that. So we're gonna keep it like that. But you need to start training from the very beginning. Otherwise you're gonna get that stereotypical cat. Everyone talks about scratching and biting. You can stop that. It's not normal for a cat to bite you, okay? You need to train them. So a lot of cats that just like, you know, they go to their backs and then they bunny kick you, which a lot of cats like to do for fun. And they're gonna start to hurt you too. Or if they bite you or that they scratch you, that's not normal, okay? That's not normal. You need to train them from the very beginning. Stop them from the very beginning. Otherwise you may actually have to, like eventually you have guests over or friends over. They're not gonna wanna come over. They're not gonna like it. And it's just like, I wanna pet the cat and all of a sudden this just happens. I'm like, you need to start from the very beginning. Socialize them properly. Make sure that they're comfortable with it. So if you get that straight, you should be good to go. So that's my experience as being a cat mommy. I'm not an expert 100%. I really just, I've done a lot. I had a lot of cats, so. <laughs> so it was easy for me to learn and not to mention, I don't have anyone else to worry about other than my boyfriend who knows almost as much as me, not really. I tell him what to do. But if I had like, let's say a family or I had like just a roommate, they may not be as susceptible to the information that I'm talking about. So like, let's say for example, biting or anything like that. They may be like, ew, and then you pull back. It's just kind of like, you know, it hurts a little bit to the cats and they think it's a game. They're gonna think like, ooh, you just like pull back. I'm gonna go for it. And you just stop. So things like that, 100% recommend you to check out Jackson Galaxy's channel and all the cat from hell videos. You learn a lot from cat behavior and you won't have a cat from hell if you watch those videos and you learn. So thank you so much and see you guys next time. And maybe I can try to get Sora here. So that way, you know, it's his one year anniversary here. So, so I'm lucky and I managed to get two of them. Aw, look at him. Okay.
Look at that. They're so cute. This is so cuddly. They weren't really great together in the beginning, but now they are because, you know, I did a lot of acclimation periods. So make sure to check out the video over here in terms of like how that happened. I talked about it a little bit and I showed some videos of it too in that video. I didn't talk about it that much in terms of how I did it, but this shows a little bit how I did it. But now we wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays for whatever holidays you celebrate. The Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year. 